Wait, I think so. I'm sorry. I think I hit the stop recording button instead of stop sharing. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, <does> it... <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, so... it's all right. I can let me, um, uh, let's see one participant. I think I'm still the host because I still have that pause the recording button. Okay. Let me, uh, it's recording go... now. I think it's recording now. It's, it is recording now. Okay. So, okay. Yep, it is. Let me, uh, Let's see, I'm trying to give it to uh, Kevin. Here we go. Awesome. Kevin, make co host. There you go. Awesome. All right. Great. That was that was really good uh, about that CVE. It's funny because a <laughs> company I work for, we use WebEx. So that makes me really wonder when they're going to talk about the, uh, you know, disclosing that, but maybe they fixed it right in the patch. We That's what we hope for. So there we go. Oh, interesting. I gotta get permissions in. Give me just a minute. I'm gonna have to quit and reopen, unfortunately. That's fine, go, go for it and then, right uh, yeah. Okay, I'm back. Okay, uh, are you still co-host? You bro, you should be. I think it 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 might have you. To, you might have to delegate again, because I, I. Okay, let me actually do it. Let me. Uh, what are you? At? There you are. Uh, there you go. Make co-host. Boom. Sweet. There we go. Awesome. Right. Everybody can see my screen. I'm open. Yeah, you're good. Okay, perfect. Thanks for taking the time to, to, uh, you know, spend with uh, Pacific hackers. We enjoy, you know, talking about security. We're so um, security minded that <laughs> that's what kind of, you know, organization we are, but a little bit um, about my talk today is going to be called uh, obviously security um, SOC as a service, but, you know, I did want to introduce myself and kind of go through and talk about, um, let me get that out of the way, um, you know, a little bit, introduce myself so that everybody knows who I am and kind of that, that uh, can be um, one of the things I like to introduce to uh, the community, but I've been part of this organization for a couple of years, me and Rod actually met during RSA a couple of years ago, and that being said, you know, I've been in IT, you know, industry for probably pretty much over a decade and uh, wore many different hats and uh, kind of worked in the private and public sector. And the good thing about it is I think with IT, you are integral to the organization because you get to, you know, not only interact with various, you know, uh, departments, you know, from HR all the way, you know, to facilities all the way back up to the CEO, the, the stakeholders, right? You, you, you basically touch every part of the organization. So, you know, uh, you know, without a doubt, we're involved in, in security, you know, is one of our, you know, uh, you know, things that, that come, I, I think it comes with the role, but, you know, it's not, you, you're not in a sock, right? But you, you definitely have to be aware and security and have a security mindset in my opinion, to be successful, uh, you know, as, a, as a, someone that's working in the help desk or desktop support roles. But that being said, you know, I, I, I did start out early in my career, luckily, working as a contractor. And, um, you know, I did get a chance to work with many different organizations until, you know, I started realizing that, you know, all these companies, they all have, you know, different um, types of, you know, uh, methods for their SOC or their NOC. 
you know, and some of them are basically on site and you can walk into a room and, and there's an actual department and, but then a lot of them are outsourced. And, in you know, in the last, I'd say in the last five years, I've started noticing that. And um, it started to, it started to dawn on me that, you know, we're reaching a point now with the internet of things and all these different um, types of, you know, uh, companies that are small, medium-sized businesses and, and, you know, the big players, obviously, the Fortune 500s, there's 24-7 security operations centers that are, you know, happening, you know, to, to monitor all these, these various, um, you know, organizations and how do they do it successfully? How do you monitor 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 organizations? And, um, or do they have an in-house security team you know, and so that that kind of, you know, is where this talk is going to come into play. But, you know, being that being said, I kind of wanted to just introduce myself. You know, I do organize a lot of uh, the presenters for the, you know, Pacific Hackers, as well as I've attended the conferences in the past. And Marco and, and Rod are, you know, amazing people. And, and just to say, this is a great organization for people to learn about how to get into cybersecurity and kind of, you know, if they're interested in learning and, and we provide this for free, you know, and that's something I wanna say that that's been one of the things that has kept me in being involved is that I feel like giving back and being part of like the community that's doing that to try to, you know, you know, get get people some sort of like a, a you know, a beginning, a starting point to to look into cybersecurity roles. So that's that's mainly what I wanna say about myself also, you know, I do obviously, you know, work in and now in InfoSec and, and I did kind of start in IT and then I kind of pivoted and, and like wearing many different hats, I think is great, you know, because then, you know, in, a, in an organization, because then with, without a doubt, you just get to see a, a lot of different things and, and being out here in the Bay Area has just been a great experience for me and in, in overall my career. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start with the, the, the security, uh, you know, SOC as a service, but I really wanna talk about it because I think the future is really gonna come down to organizations are looking at it. The market's shifting, right? Um, there's a lot of things happening with companies and they're outsourced in a lot of their infrastructure. And, and some of the things that, you know, I, I started doing this research on this topic and it just, it was dawning on me. I was like, there's a lot of companies out there that are already doing this, but we don't really think about it as, as SOC as a service or providing, you know, a, a service where you protect their, you know, infrastructure 24 seven. What's the, what's the, what are the models like? So I started looking at the subscriptions and some of the offerings and you'd be surprised that a lot of the companies are, you know, already kind of exploring this because they've, they've also thought about it too. Like there's, there's, you know, with the remote workforce and, and kind of with the, with the situation we're in with COVID, obviously people are, you know, scattered across the globe, right? But they're working in, in, in these companies, but at the end of the day, you still have to have a SOC, right? You, you still have to have IT, you still have to have different things to, to protect your environment. So with that being said, you know, it's a, a, a big thing for me to, to get into the, 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 build, the build on this principle of, it's, you know, what is a SOC? You know, what's the start, start with that. You know, it's a 24 seven security operations center. So, and it's long been considered like an essential part of, of an effective cybersecurity strategy for an organization, you know, and it supported, you know, a SOC is supports both technology and people, and it introduces the capability to identify, investigate and resolve targeted cyber threats. That's, that's pretty much what, what I would say, you know, kind of, encapsulates what's happening at, at the level of a SOC. But we know there's people, there's, you know, um, a lot of technology involved, you know, there's a lot of vendors, right? And, you know, without that being, you know, with that being said, without a doubt, that's important to understand, you know, what types of things are happening in the SOC, you know, um, with an expanding uh, attack surface, like I was saying with you know, um, some of the things like, uh, you know, with alert fatigue and cyber sk skills shortage, this is why I'm bringing this up, is that, you know, the big thing is you're looking at now a new um, era for cybersecurity. People are are going now and, and creating their own tools and, and, and innovations behind cybersecurity initiatives that they're thinking about like in, instead of just saying, okay, well, the old model is you got to go work for somebody. You're you're actually 
you know, a sp specialized in, and you have certain tools that you can bring to the table. And that's why, you know, I talk about this whole thing about SOC as a service. You're, you're basically looking at yourself and saying, hey, what do I have to offer? Am I a threat hunter, you know, or somebody who's a security analyst? What level in this particular, you know, methodology can I see myself being able to provide a service? And that's, even it can be even consulting, compliance, regulatory. It doesn't have to be, you know, you're looking at alerts, you know, because we, we know alert fatigue is part of the, one of the reasons why people, you know, look at, you know, having that outsource because with the SOC, you know, you know, it's very much, you're, you're having people at tier one and tier two, and there's a lot of high turnover and burnout. So those things can be outsources, what I'm saying. And, and because of that, you know, you, you keep, you know, you, you keep thinking about retention and, and how to keep staffing and, and, you know, your cost down. That's where companies are starting to look for, you know, other ways to, um, to, to, to deliver their services. And as far as, you know, to get security, cybersecurity um, handled by an outsource by another entity. And, um, you know, with that being said, you know, I do want to say, you know, I, do, I don't want to get specific about um, different um, vendors because, you know, I think it's vendor, I want to stay vendor neutral, but I know there, there are a lot of different vendors out there that, that definitely um, adhere to this. And there's some that, you know, a lot of companies use and you, and you know, these, these are super popular. Um, with that being said, let me go to the next one uh, slide, which is basically depending on your type of system or organization, um, you know, a SOC, the SOX processes may be governed by the compliance regula regulations uh, such as HIPAA or PCI. Some of these um, security operations center is, is required, you know, to frequently audit their system to ensure compliance. Um, you know, and that's a big one. And when I say, again, when I talk about SOC as a service, some of these things that I'm talking about as a, and within the SOC team, you know, that's that there's more um, opportunities for you to look at well, you know, sometimes you, you, you have to spend so much money in terms of just to get compliant. And that, and that can be, you know, very, very complex for a, a stay a startup, right? You, you're really just trying to get your, your company off the ground. You know that there's a lot of moving parts that you got to just keep the money flowing, you know, with, the, with, the, with, your, with your investors and the board, and you, you're trying to work on other things. And so compliance and governance is really, you know, it's not something that you think of, um, but you can you can look at that as what if I just outsourced it, right? What what if I had that as part of the offering, right? The subscription offering, so for someone else to handle that, and and then you know, not only does it protect the sensitive data, you know, uh, uh, you know that that you have, but they can also you know shield you from liability and reputation harm, right? Because if you're a small startup, that's one of the biggest things, right? You get hacked before you can even get. To go public or, or just brand reputation damage right so the, the you know from 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 a legal standpoint at least you have that sort of like taken care of and you can work on building your company and growing the team and you know making sure that you know you can you can have that roadmap uh and and, and of success uh, obviously too implementing and managing your security tools with a SOC team you rely on a suite of technology products that help you manage and protect your organization's security environment you have all these things, right? With 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 SOC as a service, you don't have to worry about that, right? Th those are all done, and you can just basically run your company. You know, thinking about how best can can we, you know, move forward without you know some of these other things that you might have to, you know, spend a lot of time that your team is going to be, you know, bogged down in a lot of these roadblocks because build, building a, a, a good staff, you know, there's a lot of things happening. You know, and, and like I said, again, you know, you got to look at alert fatigue and alert ranking and, and management. And then in a SOC, you have to juggle a variety of emerging threats at any given time. So if you think about it, you know, you might have people who are specialized in one area, but not another. You're going to spend so much time trying to hire for people that you might not have that are that, that they are they're very specialized in one area and, and not in another. And so keeping, you know, that and, and, and constantly worrying about it. It could, it could be it could be something that keeps keeps you up at night and say as a CEO right so you you want to try to think about how can I how can we be more efficient and and how can we streamline some of these processes um but my main thing is you know looking at uh companies nowadays they're they're now starting to look at that stuff and, and retention is a big one right but the the one I want to point out is alert ranking and management 
how do you, uh, uh, you know, how, do, how does a SOC may juggle a variety of emerging threats at any given time? That's one of our biggest concerns, like, you know, um, at our company is that how do we, how do we know what's a false positive, right? Do we have the, 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 the time and wherewithal to sit down and look at everything? Sometimes some of that stuff can be outsourced. I'm not saying every aspect of the SOC can be outsourced, but you can look at some of the, like the data loss prevention, right? Space, especially if you're trying to be, um, you're looking at compliance and governance, especially when, when we're looking at companies and sensitive data and data governance, that's a huge one. So if you have companies that, you know, something that can take, take that away off your plate and, com and a company um, is growing, you know, you're trying, to, you're trying to staff up, right? So having a, a SOC can be difficult too, because to, to tell you the truth, most of the times, uh, you know, when you look at a job description and it says, hey, I need this person, they've got to know like 40 or 50 different technologies. And you're like, oh, come on, really? You know, it's like, this is not written. This is written from an HR perspective, not a hiring manager perspective, which is some of the reasons why I say, you know, it, it could be good to get, you know, someone that 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 is knowledgeable about some of these things, but you're probably not going to, to me, going to hit every uh, everything that you want to get in, in uh, looking for a candidate. You might get close to some of it. But other than that, you know, that's the main thing. Um, what services does a SOC uh, perform? Well, gauging your available IT resources, uh, you know, that that's a big one, you know, because even where I'm at right now, you know, it's lean. Every, every company is thinking about how can we, you know, cut down costs and, and if we're scaling, how can, you know, what other things can we reduce to, you know, to maintain, you know, our infrastructure to keep it safe and secure. But in order to protect your various devices, processes, and applications, the SOC must gain total advantage over your organization's environmental threat landscape. And, and that's the big thing, right? To accomplish this, they must review various service systems, networks, and applications at storage processes. But honestly, uh, being working that, I've had that experience working in IT, these things, it's hard, right? Because you've got to have a person that's dedicated to that. Again, that's why I'm saying SOC as a service is starting to look really good for companies because, you know, they're starting to think of, you know, where we can, offset some of these things because IT is already busy keeping up, you know, with the daily, you know, keeping access and and and, and making sure that the they keep the house, you know, lights on and so to speak and keeping things up and running. But it's also about, you know, uh, looking at your disaster recovery plan, some of that other stuff. You can kind of look at some of these things to be outsourced. And, and that's the that's the bigger part. I think as companies grow too and they use a lot of these cloud-based SaaS applications, it starts to become more more apparent to me, um, you know, just it's just it's just it's easier, you know, to run your company and think about, OK, it's outsourced. We hope that, you know, nothing would happen. But, you know, most of the time we, we were already, you know, kind of overwhelmed with just the day to day. So that's kind of like why I touched I touched on some of the things that I did. Um, also, cost savings. One of the first reasons why an organization will work with the stock is that it lowers the total cost of ownership. And when you partnership with shop, with a SOC, you don't have to spend money hiring internal security analysts and purchasing software, or wasting valuable time, or make and make sure the security environment and solutions are working as intended. So that that's some of the advantage: access to advanced technology, skilled and experienced professionals. It, you know, and it simplifies the IT relationship. You know, because I think a lot of things where I've noticed in companies. Sometimes you'll see a situation where they'll they'll think of it as okay we have a security team but then we have IT and then IT and security you know have their own version of what is security you know and some of the things that fall in in the line of say you have you know uh, an agent running on each person's machine and then you know that person you know says hey something's happening and you know security reaches out and you have to verify or say there's a brute force attack or something like that you have to verify it and 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 if you're in a position where you're already dealing with so much and it's already on your plate and you don't have someone in, in that in security say that can say hey you know that's a false positive or whatever you're just wasting time and i think that some of the things I'm seeing too, and, and even in my role, um, I'm seeing like, uh, you know, again, false positives, alert fatigue. So you're chasing down a lot of things that, and then you find out, oh, it was just because, you know, there's a lot of different things happening and, and it, could, it couldn't even be related to the, to the issue in, at hand and the root cause could be something completely different. 
Also, you know, I think with the advanced, access to advanced technologies part for SOC as a service, there's a lot of uh, obvious offerings that your company, you may not have the ability to, um, you know, the, uh, with, with the cost and overhead of maintaining a specific tool. And, you know, if you think about it, if you have that as a subscription base, you, you could customize it and say, hey, you know, I only need to, to know certain you know, these things that I want protected. But if you have an overall um, advantage in the sense of like, you can, you can scale it down or scale it up, it's elastic, right? And the subscription-based models depend on, you know, what your SLAs are, if you have P0s, um, all that can be determined. But, you know, you, you, you have an opportunity like that to grow and, 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 and your company based upon some of that stuff that, that I talked about, you can grow it and customize it. Also, you know, a high cost of, of complexities and in-house cybersecurity operations, too much noise and um, an increasing complex cybersecurity landscape is creating problems of, for businesses of every size, severe alert and regulation fatigue, vendor overload and complex compliance issues. With the growing skills gap, you know, when I talk about that, that's where I'm saying as you're, as you're um, looking at it from a cybersecurity professional, what particular skill set do I have where I can offer it as a service. And this is kind of where I'm coming up with my own, you know, looking at my career, I'm like, you know, I'm doing a lot of different things to assess what's it gonna look like in five or 10 years, you know, with the growing landscape of cybersecurity, because it's only gonna get more complicated as we know. And that's why I think that the future is gonna be somewhat like, uh, you know, this whole thing with, with SOC as a service, because, you know, as we're growing as, as the IoT landscape, you're, you're, you're thinking about all these billions of people with, with mobile devices, it's gonna get more and more complex, especially when we're looking at um, people working from home and, and what's, your, what's your home environment, is it secure? So that's why I think if you have someone else in a SOC situation where they can out, you can outsource that, they can monitor your environment in real time, twenty four seven. It's 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 harder for me to think about. Okay, I'm going to hire twenty people. There's all these various people in, in different aspects that are going to you know monitor the environment and have a you know like a you know a full a real time assessment of my environment. People got to go on vacation, right? People are gonna are gonna maybe make make mistakes, but if you look at it from a from a from a a, a larger standpoint. There's more room for mistakes when people get tired, right? They and then that's why we have the burnout and the high turnover, which I think is is, is when you look at the subscription-based model, they'll spread it out amongst um, of their team, right? They can hire people who are, you know, in different regions of the world where it'll become much more staggered, where it's not just one thing that you can have and 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 say, you know, in a particular region, but it's spread out all over the world, so. That's another aspect that I think is an advantage. Um, you know, and it, you know, the biggest thing about SOC as a service is, you know, it, these things are obvious, like right? prevents intrusion, de uh, detects and monitors cyber threats. It contains, you know, these are the things that, you know, you can look at that are that are the benefits and the potential business, you know, prioritize remediation based on potential business impacts. Um, you know, a lot of the companies that, that um, you know, are 24 seven, 365, right? That I'm talking about the fortune top, 500 companies, you know, the, the big players in Silicon Valley, think about it, they have no downtime, there is no, you know, scheduled maintenance, it's it's constant go, go, go. So with the with the SOC as a service model, you can have a staff subscription so that, you know, your staff is there, it's, the coverage is there, it's customizable, it's based on the SLAs of each uh, c company, you know, whatever, however it, you think about it, it's based to prioritize remediation based on potential business impacts, which is a huge one, which I think, you know, comes down to how you want to look at your, your subscription model with the, uh, you know, the whole thing. But, um, you know, the size of the organization benefits, you know, from, from SOC as a service, you know, it, it's really going to come down to money, you know, it, it's subscription based model. And, and a lot of companies don't, they don't have the budgets. Uh, the small startups, the smaller ones don't have it. So they like to think about it. Oh, it's a subscription base. Sure. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of, um, it makes sense to me for you to get in where you can and at least have some way to protect your company and your infrastructure versus you got to compete with the bigger companies, right? And, and get and get completely um, inundated with the the cost that it takes. Because a lot of the, the bigger players, they obviously want to 
have a longer, you know, subscription models or something like that for their services. And you don't even know if some of these tools work, you know, and, and I think that's, that's the big thing. But I think the first stage starts with an assessment, getting somebody to come in and then saying, hey, what is your environment like? What do we need to, you know, look at? And what are your crown jewels and things like that so that you can kind of start from the beginning and then, and then you can scale up. But with the, with the SOC as a service, see how you can customize it. You, it's scalable, but it's also, you know, micro and small businesses. Cause a lot of, there's a lot of startups, you know, uh, especially in Silicon Valley. I mean, every other day I'm looking at, there's a new company. And so I think the bigger part is if you don't have an in-house, um, you know, uh, security, you know, uh, model to say, hey, or you don't even have a budget for it. You can at least come up with some of that stuff um, from the beginning and say, hey, okay, at least we got security, you know, in some degree, but it may not be what we want. But until we can get to that point, we can, we can just, you know, we can keep, keep some things um, in mind when it comes to that uh, security mindset. But, you know, another thing is um, handing off the, the security's responsibility to the team of security specialists. That's the, that's the big benefit of it, right? Uh, and it's also when I talked about the the benefits are going to be around, you know, retention, you know, um, again, with the, you know, with the cybersecurity skill shortage, it, it means that your organization struggle to attract and retain skilled security personnel. And, and I'll touch on that in a, in a different sense of think about it, the, the people who are, you know, highly sought out in this field, they're, they're going to the highest bidder. That's just how it works, right? You're getting I get even, you know, um, some, some people asking me, hey, you know, you know, how how is it that this person, you know, gets this job and that job? And I'm like, you know, because they, they're highly skilled in, in a specific area. And, and that's because, you know, they've been working in that industry for so long. And everyone knows as, as your reputation grows in this industry, you become super popular and then companies look you up and you don't have to worry about looking for work. Work's looking for you. So. You know, but, you know, the bigger thing is when I talk about SOC, SOC as a service, it's kind of like that. You kind of you kind of build your own reputation as a security professional. And with with that being said, that's kind of the reason why it's hard for the skills, the skills shortage, because there's a lot of the, the really highly qualified folks are already working or they're either being highly sought out. And they and they usually get a lot more money if they go to a top Fortune 500 company. We just know that that's just the name you know, the nature of the, of, the, of, the, of the game, the name of the game, but improves, uh, you know, I think it improves your security staffing because if you can pay people well, they, they'll stay around, you know, SOC as a service also, uh, you know, adds on, you know, you get security expertise and you get it around the clock and you also get a dedicated, um, you know, uh, person that can actually work with you and you have a point of contact. And, you know, sometimes, you get people who are specialized in certain areas like malware an analysts or incident responders or something like that. Also, the lower uh, the lowers the, the total cost of ownership and of de deploying, maintaining, and, and operating a, a complete SOC in house can be expensive. And as you know, that's some of the reasons why I think you know a lot of times it's the high turnover or if there's a vulnerability or a breach, it's because people they can't keep the retention is hard, you know, and, and and alert fatigue and they're working in the SOC and they're just they don't they don't realize you know how much staffing it takes. And then you know once you start building a SOC, you're like, oh, this is hard to keep coverage. People are out, they're sick, they're on leave, whatever, right? And and then you you look at, you know, maybe this might be something that might be ideal for us to to outsource this. So that you know we can at least you know um, you know think about the things like I said staffing up and you're growing your company, uh, build up the solution and institutional knowledge for uh, a mature cybersecurity program is an extended process. It's an ongoing thing, so increase uh, security maturity you know and keep up to date with security and the latest tools the SOC tools. So that's another benefit of SOC as a service. Um, but the, the the other thing that I want to touch on here. Um, coming up on the on the end of this talk is the challenges of SOC as a service. You know, there, there's many, you know, benefits, but outsourcing of security is not always a simple task. Some challenges that organizations opt for managing SOC service, SOC as a service commonly encounter, you know, onboarding process is, is not as good as, you know, you can, you, it's time consuming and people, uh, you know, with that fact that, you know, you leave yourself open to, to um, organizational vulnerability, you know, to cyber uh, cybersecurity threats during the transition. So, like, again, if someone leaves the organization and they're a specific, you know, person that's highly specialized in a certain role, 
you'll lose that person. You know, um, also enterprise data security. You know, um, that's a, that's a big thing, right? Data governance, data security. Who, you know, it's always been kind of with personal information. You know, how do how do you deal with that? And especially if you got companies that are in various territories, there's various um, governance and compliance. Like, where is the data at, right? If you're if you're a company that is in the United States, is your data in Asia and is it in Europe? You know, and so there's a lot of that stuff that you got to kind of be aware of. And then the the cost of log, uh, uh, like keeping logs and things like that. That can be, you know, a, a costly thing. And then, you know, looking at, you know, how much money you're going to spend on just, you know, because think about log retention and, you know, keeping your logs around for, for say, governance and com compliance reasons. Where, who's going to store that? So that could be another issue. And then, you know, the regulatory landscape is, is, is what we see now is growing more complex. And so, you know, you have to, you have to put up safeguards for things like that and, and think about, you know, how, you may um, look at the regulatory aspect of it. So, you know, if you're looking from a, from a, from a third party, you know, it's like, what is their um, security posture? Like, are they compliant? Are they, you know, are they certified and things like that to deal with some of these issues? So some of these things may not be covered. So you, so you may not cover all your bases. So, you know, my thing is to talk about kind of like the future, I think is security um, soft, you know, SOC as a service, because I think in-house, it's going to become more, we're remote workforce right now. So I think it's going to become more and more common for you to have um, people spread out all over the world. And you're going to have, you know, outsourcing this, this service. And, you know, there are a lot of companies actually that are doing this. And, and you know, if you, if you really think about it, most of the companies that we use are doing this anyway. They just they're just not broadcasting and saying, "Hey, this is this is kind of how we look at it." But it is an added on subscription based model too, with some of these um, very like like container based like Kubernetes type and you know that kind of thing. And and what I'm saying is that's kind of going to be the future, especially with the SaaS applications, right? They have their own SOC. It's not in one place. It's very much distributed equally throughout the globe because their products are all over the world. So they have to have kind of like SOC as a service, as an offering that you pay for on top of, you know, already their their um, their product offering. So that's pretty much all my 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 talk is going to cover. Um, and and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for that awesome talk, uh, Kevin. Um, do you see um, this model applied to big corps or this is simply small and medium sized business? That's, it. That's, that's, that's something that I've thought about when I started doing my research on kind of like, a lot of companies are already doing this. If you think about it, um, AWS, you know, look at Cloudflare. It's it's literally it's it's not just SOC as a service, but it's security as a service. That, but there are other products baked on. That's why I wanted to stay vendor neutral. But if you think about it, um, you know, most of the open DNS, you know, all those companies have some kind of subscription based. But the but it's all around like AT and T even has it. You know, um, SOC as a service. So I think it's it's it, it, this is becoming more of a uh, something that where, like, if you're a small, medium enterprise business, but if you're a, at a large Fortune 500, you're prob they're probably already using these because they're not going to have to worry about, okay, we got to have a staff in house because now people are we are actually going to return to office? You know, is it actually going to happen in the next couple of years? Maybe, maybe not, but people have gotten used to working remote. And I think now, with the fact that you, we know it can work, people are going to start to say, "Well, why do we even need the, the overhead of a building and an office and keeping you know people to to have you know these times when when we can just have them working remotely from wherever what region of the world we want and we can pay them based on that region's um, cost of living." So think about it: if you got somebody maybe in another part of the world where they are happy to take you know the salary that you would have somebody take. And, and say Texas, you know, versus where they live, they would happily gladly do it. And I think that's where I'm starting to see the transition going, because I think that it's just a matter of talent, because there are people who are, you know, who have that 
the skills that that most companies are looking for, but they may not live in the U.S. and they may be around the world. So now I think with the with the SOC as a service, it's really going to come down to that uh, particular thing about you know the bigger companies are looking at at it like as a cost saving, right? And where can I find somebody who's you know got the the skills that we're looking for? But you know they're looking outside the U.S. I mean, this, let's just be honest: the cost of living, you know, in the Bay Area, you could probably get you know, for one person's salary, how many people could you employ with that in another p- place in the world? So I think the bigger companies are already using it, but they're just not, they're not saying, okay, you know, here's specifically, because I think with all the tools, I think that the the fact is, um, you know, what I'm seeing in, in the companies that I've experienced, have experienced working in, they all use some sort of out, outside, um, you know, uh, type of solution for phishing, right? For um, the, the the antivirus. So I think all those 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 things are sort of like uh, sort of like SOC as a service, but it's not initially looked at as oh well. This security operations center, this whole you know um, this whole thing is all about you know looking at it holistically from the organization standpoint. But they're using a lot of the solutions and all these various um, you know um, offerings are cloud-based and there's somewhere a place where people reside that are that are monitoring all these these different applications right and they're seeing hey there's something happening just like you know like like google workspace like how does that work right they they're, they have their own uh sock right but is it in one physical building or is it spread out and distributed throughout the world so i mean i think i think that's the future but 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 you know i'm seeing that i, I don't know if anybody else here is seeing that but that's what i'm seeing no, can they can they MSPs take care of this, or or do you see the MSP simply as organizations sending like they have probably one guy that's looking at an automated service, a cron job that sends email saying, "Hey, you got this," or are they truly taking care of it? Are they truly a sock? I think that their problem is hybrid. I think it's, you know, it comes down to cost. I think with the subscription model, I think, you know, you have to look at it like AWS, right? You pay for that premium, you're going to get that, you know, what's their SLA, right? That P0. Um, but it's all coming down to, to me, um, how you look at the bigger picture. Companies want 24 7 network monitoring and surveillance, real time alerts and attack, you know, visualization. So they're, they're looking at it from, you know, how easy is it for us to, you know, um, detect these these threats and and in real time remediate against it? And if you could outsource that, I think that that to me speaks volumes because you're gonna you're gonna have ability to not just have you know um, be re- reactionary but proactive. And I think the SOC as a service, they're gonna have a, a heads up on that. Um, they're gonna see that they can offer it. And they're going to guarantee an SLA or they're going to, you know, you're going to lose that customer. But my point is they probably have deeper insight into an organization's network in order to identify and respond to potential threats. That, that's just what I would feel like, you know, because think about it like Cloudflare, like how are they able to remediate and, and work their magic, right? As we know, um, they, they have a lot of customers, but, you know, that that again goes down to defense in depth. I think you're going to you're going to look at probably what the SOC as a service provider, you know, what, what they're offering is based upon their, their subscription, you know, because it's, it's all going to be layered on some of these tools that we're talking about and, and what they can, you know, promise based on, on, on their uh, SLA and, you know, but I think the higher, the higher the cost, obviously, um, you're going to probably, I think it's going to fall down, you know, the cost is going to fall down on how much, how much you think you can afford, you know, that, that's what I think. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? I was just gonna add to what uh, um, Rod was saying or was asking. So the, the the way I see it sometimes, because for example, I, I work in a M- MDR uh, you know team, right? So manage detection and response, right? And you know we technically are not considered a SOC as a service. And here's the reason why, 
and and that we're not considered MSSP, obviously, because I you know I work for a secure company, but there is some companies that has you know go through we go through they go through MSSPs, and all they do is you know they they, they basically you know they're the middleman between you know making sure that everything's up and running, you know they they sell you hardware software and stuff like that, but sometimes they don't do the actual work. Where a, a SOC as a service and a MDR. Um, you know, that's what they do. MDR obviously is just more for detection and response. Where SOC, you know, it's it's ba basically the whole nine yards. You're talking compliance, you're talking alert monitoring, you're talking triage, you're talking incident response, you're talking, you know, the whole thing. And so that's why, you know, uh, sometimes MSSPs are, you know, in my opinion, and again, it, you know, it, it, everybody kind of has their own definition of what are MSSP is and the SOC as a service is and what is uh, MDR. But, you know, basically in reality is that, uh, at least from what I've seen, MSSPs are, are, are kind of limited. Uh, P companies tend to buy SOC as a service or MDR solutions more than actual, uh, you know, an MSSP contract type of thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I think you're right. It's you know you can, and you can also you know I didn't want to I don't I don't want to lean too hard on one or the other. I think it depends on the, the needs of the business and also I look at it from a uh, budgetary aspect, right? Because we're talking about maybe it is you know wiser uh, uh, you know at this point in the company to to outsource it based upon you know their um, their 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 uh, you know how they're they're performing, right? Um, do they have the budget to hire a full time staff to monitor? But again, I'm 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 looking at it as um, as we grow, you know, and 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 everything is we're looking at the landscape threats, you know, are 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 becoming more and more. Uh, it's common that we need we need to staff up, right? Well, the cybersecurity skills gap that we're talking about, some of that is inherent in the fact that you know, we're human beings and, and we do get tired. And, and, and as that uh, is, is a point I'm saying too, look at, look at some of these subscription based, it could be a hybrid. It could, you could have some people on, on site that maybe do some things that you wanna have in real time, you wanna have a person, but then you also might wanna do some, some of it and customize it. And I think I've looked at enough of, of, of these offerings on, 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 like you were saying, it, it just depends on the needs of the business and the budget and and what they what they're looking to to, to protect, right? Because some things you you're right with the compliance and governance and the data governance. That's that's sticky. That's a that's a that's a very sensitive subject because you want to make sure that you're you know and and then the log delivery and all the the, the retention of the data and are from compliance from a compliance standpoint. Some of this stuff is regionally distributed all over the world, so you got to think about. Where is your sock? Where do your people, you know, um, reside? What country? You know, the, all those different things do do make a, a big um, impact on on you know, kind of like uh, what what you're looking to do in terms of you know, um, regulatory and compliant from a regulatory and compliance aspect. But but you're right. It it it's just it, it it's kind of like I think what's interesting is that most companies have this kind of hybrid uh, model, but uh, they won't really you know, uh, let, let, let it be publicly known because they know that, you know, they want to make sure that, that, that people are aware, Hey, we got some kind of, you know, robust, you know, sock, but it's not the traditional sock. You know, I think it's a hybrid. You got some things that you would have in-house and some things you'd outsource and between the two, hopefully, you know, it's the fence in depth, right? You're hoping to, you know, see that you have the 24 seven coverage that you need 365 days a year. And you have someone on, the, you know, on on a minute's notice that they can notify you and, and be proactive and look at that threat and say, hey, you know what, this is what's happening, and this is not a false positive. If there's something, you know, DDoS attack or something that that's happening, and even outages, you know, um, I'm starting to notice like misconfigurations are bigger. So if you can catch that kind of thing, I think, and be proactive, I think, you know, it just depends on the needs of the business. But that's just. You know, that's just from what I'm seeing, and, it, and it's different from each organization to each organization. Any other questions? I have uh, one question, Kevin. Okay. 
So how does uh, on-prem versus uh, on-cloud, you know, come into the picture here for, for SOC as a service? You know, I think with without a doubt, I think if, if you have an on-prem infrastructure, you need an in-house SOC, you know, because you're going to have someone there with the IT team to determine kind of what's happening in real time and being more of a SaaS, like a cloud-based company, you know, there's nothing to protect in-house, right? Like as far as like a actual servers that are set up in a data center, right? Um, I think that you probably want to look at outsourcing some of that because if you think about it, SaaS applications, Slack, you know, Google Workspace, all those have their security already inherent um, on top of what you already, you know, what your product and, and, and what's being offered in, in the product itself. But you have to think about it, um, you know, if you want to manage somebody to manage your infrastructure on prem, you probably, I would say, go with, um, you know, someone that's an in house provider because, you, you know, like a build an actual, have a team of people dedicated looking at, you know, your environment and knowing what your environment's doing because. I, I think it, it could be a hybrid model, but I feel like, you know, it's more, it's more, it just makes more sense to me because I've had both and we never outsourced anything because it was, it was like, you know, we got this, this data center, you know, that, cause that's one thing in itself, right? You got the data center and then you have the, you know, um, you have your own in-house team that knows, you know, your tech stack. And then if you outsource that, if they don't really understand, especially a lot of this, um, when you're looking at proprietary intellectual property, like things that are, you know, if you have a leak or something or, or something like that, in, in, in that sense of the code or something like that, it just damages, you know, not only, you know, before say the, the product launches, it's just, you know, irre irrecoverable damage. So it's more in, in my mind to have, we had an in-house, uh, you know, we were the dedicated uh, sock as a service, you know, as so to speak, but, you know, I think they intermarry it to kind of like as a hybrid thing with the with the IT department. So you're kind of part of it. Um, but I think that's that's how I would see the difference. Um, but but I think you, you bring up a good point. I think with smaller companies, too, to be honest, this just makes sense. Right. Because it's small. You're a small say you're, um, you know, a mom, pa shop, you know, and you just have, you know, a website that you just have things that you just want to know, hey, is, 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 it, is it okay that we're up and running 24 seven? What can you offer me? They don't have a lot of, lot of like, a, like a huge amount. They got, you know, personal data, things of the customers. So there, there's a lot at stake, but it's not the it's, the, it's a big difference between that and say a Fortune 500 company like a bank. Like it just doesn't make sense to, you know, try to go all SOC as a service, especially with a bank, you know, and that, that's where your on-prem legacy um, um, situation to me I've got some friends, friends that work in a bank and they told me they're still using like, you know, some pretty, pretty legacy systems. And, and that's why they need an in-house security. They need in-house IT. Right. Because some of the systems run on older infrastructure. But I think the newer, the companies that are emerging now, the, what I'm seeing, like the startups, they're all SaaS-based cloud applications, Slack, um, you know, Google Workspace and um, using a lot of these to their advantage so that so there really is not much more than just you know as long as someone doesn't really you know um you know if they don't have a vulnerability in one of those applications they're kind of okay but i mean there's still best practices and things like that you know that they need to follow with training up their employees and things like that okay all right yeah makes sense thanks kevin yeah okay. and also i just want to add to what uh, kevin just mentioned so it, 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 this is really true. Obviously, not all companies will require a you know MSSP, MDR, or or SOC as a service. Uh, merely the, the companies that have like uh, you know traditional networks and stuff like that who who will require someone on prem and you know and, and even even if they're moving to the cloud, not everything's going to be in the cloud because there's a lot of things that are still going to be you know on prem. Uh, but you know. Uh, startups for example that they, they now there's a new thing and you probably everybody hear about it called zero zero, zero trust right so um which is basically what pretty much all the companies like uh kevin mentioned uh you know slack and salesforce and all those you know uh, 
are implementing. So the, the requirement to have, you know, you know, an actual SOC might, might not be it, but maybe all you need is account management. Maybe that's where they need the, uh, uh, you know, to focus on, or that's where they need to do some type of uh, monitoring. But other than that, you know, it will not require, but it, it really depends on the, the size of the company for sure. Yeah, and I, and I, my main reason for bringing this talk also is to talk about the, um, you know, the, the, the thing about the future, right? We want to see what, what's it going to look like five, 10 years from now? Are we going to have in house, uh, you know, uh, like an actual sock or knock and all that? Because you think about it, if it's all cloud based and it's all, you know, in, in, in the so called, you know, in, in this uh, environment where we, where we have all these IoT devices, even if you hi have a sock and hire folks that are, specialized in, in various deg degrees of, of knowledge of you know cybersecurity. there's so many devices out there now and people are bringing that into your environment and and you kind of have to think about it are you going to have a person that specialized in each of those different various you know um types of iot devices and then you start getting into you know how would you even look at the threats and, and 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 even keeping up with that stuff so it's going to get overwhelming and i think there's going to be a lot to a lot of noise and i think if you it depends on the organization's needs but i think if you're a small startup you're focused on the product getting getting it to launch or you're, you're focused on something to get you you know to ipo or, or wherever you need to be you know and to be to be successful right but if you're worried about your constant day and night up, staying up, thinking about security, cybersecurity is always on everyone's mind. And it, it definitely, you know, it, when, when I say that on everybody's mind in, in the bigger picture, when it comes to, you know, brand reputation and, and there's there's things that, you know, you could you could kind of offset. And I'm not saying all of it can be, it can be a hybrid model, um, but it, it definitely is something to explore. And also for opportunities for people, when you think about it, I know a company right now, and that's what they they do is they do software as a service, uh, and they do you know infrastructure as a service, and guess what? They do SOC as a service. They do it all. They have an in-house literally for anything you need. They if you need engineers to come in and, and build help you build your product, they got that. They got infra so it's not uncommon. It's just I think in in the way that we're moving with the with the digital you know with this digital world that we live in. You're looking at a, a, a large um, segment that's, that's going to be, you know, an opportunity for people to advance their careers and think about, you know, working with this kind of my, mindset. And this, you know, and my thing is the future is going to be a remote workforce, and you can work from anywhere. With the, you know, the thought about satellites being up in in places that, and you're going to have connections in remote areas that you in regions of the world that you never had you literally can have that but you're right if you're a small business and you're on-prem your mom pa shop it doesn't it doesn't it might be a subscription-based model that maybe it doesn't make sense for you to go in and say hey i need this you know particular solution that might not be ideal based upon you know the needs of the business and and it, it doesn't you know let's just be honest these things are costly and as you start start to look at you know building your you know growing your business you, you can't afford, you know, all these these different types of tools. So sometimes you have to think about, hey, it would be great to have some things offered. At least I got some kind of SLA. At least I have some sort of, uh, you know, um, way that I can get into uh, looking at cybersecurity instead of being like, hey, I got to go all in and it costs me so much, you know. Um, but at, at the end of the day, we all need security, you know. Um, and I think it's important, but it also creates opportunities for people to be innovative. And I think that's what what I'm really getting at is like if you're a threat hunter, maybe you can offer your service and and you could say, hey, I might not be a whole total sock, but I can have someone else who, you know, does uh, some other aspect of cybersecurity, and we can all go in together. Somebody's good in regulatory compliance, and then that is is basically you offer that, and that's kind of like what most most companies I'm starting to see are, are doing. There's like a couple of people who are specialized in certain areas, and it could just be you know you go in and assess it, and then. Do, do what you have to do your due diligence to figure out maybe we can offer this as a service based upon this SLA and then it could be something that you could you know the, um, build a, 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 your own brand based on that so that that was the reason why one of the things that I thought was interesting I saw a lot of companies by the way if you research and uh, you will find a ton even at and I was kind of surprised they offer it you know <laughs> I was like that's ingenious you know because people 
you know, small businesses, who wouldn't want something, and you know, at least to say, hey, you know, at and I love it. You know, you got your cable, then you go and you, you get your sock as a service. You got, you know, you got everything bundled into one is what I'm saying. So that that's kind of what I, my thoughts are on this. So that's why I wanted to present today. But I appreciate everybody for um, taking the time to spend listening to me today. And if you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks again, Kevin. That was that was a, a, a great presentation. Um, if there are no uh, any other questions, um, then I will see you guys. We will see you guys next week. Remember, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Maker Nexus in uh, Santa Clara and uh, bring your laptop. We'll have Wi-Fi. Probably oh, there's some pizza and some food. There will be an event around if you want to get to know the, the venue. Um, the venue is it's huge, by the way. Uh, and this, this is the place where we're likely to do our in-person meetings for the near future as we try to go back to the library and the library is still not allowing large group meetings. So hopefully I will see a lot of you next week. Um, join us in Discord. That's where we communicate 24-7. And uh, thanks again for joining us today. All right, guys. Uh, thanks, everybody. Same as Rod. Uh, hope to see you guys next week. And uh, yeah, be safe. And uh, you know, uh, if you if we don't see you anymore, uh, happy holidays. Have the a good rest of the the year. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll hit hard uh, when 2021, uh, 2022 comes comes on. So I'll see you guys later. All right.